Hi, this is the NCFE Functional Skills Maths Level 1. We've got practice paper P001255 and we're starting with the non-calculator section. Activity 1. New car. Dennis thinks he's spending too much money on fuel for his car. He uses this formula to work out how much fuel in litres he uses in a year. We've got fuel used in litres equals distance travelled in miles times 4.5 divided by miles per gallon. Last year he travelled 10,000 miles. His car did 40 miles per gallon. How many litres of fuel did Dennis use last year? OK, so we're just going to put these values into our formula. Right, so the fuel used is equal to distance travelled. Well, he travelled 10,000 miles. So we've got 10,000. Then we multiply it by 4.5. Uh, so let's do this bit first. Well, I'm going to write it this way around. 4.5, we're multiplying it by 10,000. Right, so we can just move the decimal place once for every zero that we've got. So we've got four zeros, so one, two, three, four. Then we just fill in the zeros. So we've got this as four, five, zero, 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 and then we can put the comma in there. So we've got 45,000 miles. Then we need to divide it by miles per gallon. So we've got our 45,000 that we've worked out here. Dividing that by 40 miles per gallon. Well, we can cancel a zero there with a the zero there. So we end up with 4,500 divided by 4. Well, let's do that using, we'll move this up, using the bus stop method. So 4 into 4,500. Well, 4 into 4 goes once. 4 into 5 goes once. Remainder 1. 4 into 10. we got 4, 8. So that goes twice. With 2 left over. And 4 into 20. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. So that's 5 times. So how many litres of fuel did Dennis use last year? That's this answer here, so it's 1,125. And they've already put litres for us. 1B. The average cost of petrol last year was £1.29p per litre. How much did it cost Dennis last year for 100 litres of petrol? So this is similar to what we were doing before. We've got 1.29 pounds. Multiplying by 100, well, for every zero, we move the decimal point one to the right. We're making it bigger. So one for the first zero, and again for the second zero. So in other words, that is 129 pounds. Put that in there. 1C. Dennis takes out or uh, takes a loan out to buy a car. He borrows four thousand pounds. He will pay five percent interest on the loan. Calculate four thousand pounds increased by five percent. Well what we'll do first is we'll work out what the five percent is, and then we'll add that on to the four thousand to get the answer that they've asked for. So we want five percent. Well I know that 10%, for 10%, we can just take a zero off. So 10% would be 400 pounds. And 5%, well, 5 is half of 10. So half of 400 would be 200. So this is the interest amount. So now all we need to do is to take our 4,000 and add on. Are 200 of interest. 
So 0 and 0 is 0. And again, 0 plus 2 is 2. 4 plus nothing is 4. So we've got a final answer, 4,200. No, oh, let's do it here. One D. Dennis looks for a car to buy. There are three hundred and ninety-six cars advertised. Twenty-five percent of them are diesel cars. What is twenty-five percent of three hundred and ninety-six? Okay, so there's different ways of doing this. You could do twenty-five divided by a hundred times three hundred and ninety-six. Uh or you could say, well, 12, what I'm going to do is say, well, 25% is the same as one quarter. So what we want is one quarter of 396, which is the same as one quarter times 396. So when we're doing this, we can do multiply the numerator by the whole number, so 1 times 396, which is just 396. And then we need to divide by the 4. So let's do this with the bus stop method. 4 into 3 doesn't go. 4 into 39, well, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 36, 40 would be too many, so we're going to stop at 36, so that was 9 times. And from 36, we've got 37, 38, 39, so that's remainder 3. And then we want 4s into 36, well that's what we saw just now, but I'll do it again anyway. So 4, 8, 12, 4, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 36, so that was 9. So we've got 99. 1E. Dennis finds 20 cars that he could buy. He writes down how many miles each one has travelled. Now we've got all of these here. Use the data to complete the frequency table below. Well, we've got a box. If I move this up. I've got a box here that we need to fill in and a box here to fill in. Well, the mileage, all of these mileage ranges are, well, from 50,000 to 59,999, 60,000 to 69,999. So they're 10,000 miles wide, basically. So if we follow the same pattern, so 80, 70, 60, 50, we're going to be starting from 40,000. And if we just check, we might want to make sure that we haven't got anything smaller than 40,000. Well, we've got 45, 40, 50, 60s. Yeah, no, this looks good. So it's going to be 40,000 up to, and we want one before 50,000, so it's going to be 49,999. And you can see we're sort of following the same pattern there. So all we need to know now is what goes in this box. And this is the frequency, so this is how many we've got that are between 70,000 and 79,999. So how many of these numbers begin with like 70, 70 something? So no, 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 no. Yes, we've got one there. No, 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 no. Another one there. No, no, no. Another 70. No, 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 no. One there. So we've got one, two, three, four. And if we want to check, well, we know that there were 20 cars to start with. If we add these all up, we get 3, 6, plus 8 is 14, plus 4 is 18, plus 2 is 20. Yep, yeah, that looks good. We don't have to do this, but it just checks to make sure we haven't missed any. And 1F. Draw a frequency chart. Use the data from the completed table in question 1E. Oh, okay, so I'm going to have to flip back over for this. 
So they want us to use this table here. So we're going to need the mileage and we're going to need the frequency. Now frequency, I'm going to do the frequency going up the side. Don't have to, but it's usually just easier that way. Okay, so we're going to have frequency going up and the highest frequency we've got is 8. And then we're going to have our mileage going along the bottom. So this is a graph paper they've given us. So if we start, I'll make this down at zero. Now we've got to go up to eight. Now we could do one of these squares for each one. So we could do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But that's not really going to be using the graph paper that well. We'd only be using a small corner. So instead, what about if we say each two boxes make that one? So we could have one, two, three, four, and I'm doing this carefully to make sure it's going to fit five, another two boxes, six, two boxes, seven, and eight there. There you go. That looks like we're using the, the graph paper better. We're using more of it. Okay, we've got to make sure that we always start at zero and we've got the same gap between each of the numbers. Right, so that's going to be our frequency. And then along the bottom, what are we going to need along here? Well, this is our mileage. And we've got five different ranges. We had 40 to 49 1999, 50 to 59,999. So if we've got five of them, how many boxes should we have for each? Well, maybe, let's see, if we started, we could maybe have three boxes for one bar, then a gap, then another three, then a gap, then another three, then a gap, then another three, then a gap, then another three. That feels like that would, that would work, so let's... Draw this in. So, and I'm going to just do these markings here. It's all about just laying it out nicely so it's clear. We've got equal spacing for everything. So, this is going to be our mileage. And we're going to have 40,000 to 49,999. 50,000 to 59,999, 60,000 to 69,999, 70,000 to 79,999, and finally 80,000 to 89,999. Right, now we were asked to draw a frequency chart. Well, I'm drawing a bar graph for this one, a frequency chart. You could do it just with lines, but I'm, I'm going to go with bars. So, for, uh, let's turn this back over. For 40,000 to 49,999, we had three. So basically, we've got three, three, eight, four, two. So, this first bar is going to go up to three. And then the next bar we had was also at 3. Then the next one we had was up at 8. Then we had 4 for this one. And then it was down at 2 for the last bar. And now I can draw all my vertical lines down. Now usually I would do bar charts, I'd do the bars touching, just because it's easier. Today I haven't. Uh, I think just because of the amount of space we've got. But it doesn't matter if you've got your bars touching. That's absolutely fine. But I'm making sure that all my bars are equally spaced and the bars themselves are the same width. Okay. And they've already done a title for us, so that's all we need to do. 
And that's the end of the non-calculator section. This is NCFE Level 1 Functional Skills Maths Practice Paper P001255 and now we're on to the calculator section. Activity 2. Hens and eggs. Sadie wants to keep hens in her garden. She finds this information about some different types of hens. We've got type of hen, we've got all the different types here, and the number of eggs per year. Calculate the range in the number uh, numbers of eggs per year. Well, the range is the biggest minus the smallest. So which is the biggest one here? 280. And which is the smallest? Well, it's 120. So we can use our calculator, so we might as well. And we've got a range of 160. To be. Sadie sees these hen houses. The Majestic, £605 with a 30% discount, and the Classic, £636, one third discount. Which hen house would be cheaper after the discount? Okay, well, let's start with the Majestic, 30% discount. Well, let's work out the 30%, and then we can take it off. So 30% is going to be 30 out of 100 times 605. And we can do this on the calculator. 30 divided by 100 equals times 605 gives us 181.5 or 181 pounds 50. And then, so if we do 605 minus 181.5, we're going to get, well, we can do it 605 minus. 1.5 pounds 50. Well, if we just do it like this, we get 0 0.5. But because it's money, we need to put the zero to make it 50. Okay. Now, I could have done this slightly differently. Uh, what I could have said is, if we've got 30% being taken off, that means I'm going to be left with 70%. So I could have just said, well, 70% is 70 divided by 100. Multiply that by 605, and we get straight to the answer. So that's quicker, doing it that way. Now, the only reason I do it this way is because this is often a bit easier to remember. Okay, But if you're able to do it going straight for 70% instead of taking the 30% off, then excellent. Okay, Either way, this is the answer we get. Now, the classic, we've got a one-third discount. So, again, what we could do is we could work out one-third of this and take it off. So, actually, let's do it that way. So, one-third of means one-third times 636. So, one divided by three times 636. Now, with these calculators, especially if you've got a simple one like this, you can get... The, uh, the numbers, the rounding going a bit funny. So we can see that this is 212. What we can do instead is put the whole number first. So do it as 636 times 1 and then divided by 3. You get the same overall answer, but it's easy. You don't have to do the rounding. So if you do get something strange like that, just do it in a different order. Do the whole number first. So we get one third is 212 pounds. It's one third discount. So we need to take this. Uh, oh, we need to take the two hundred and twelve away from the six hundred and thirty-six, and we get four hundred and twenty-four pounds. Again, a different way of thinking of it is: if it's one third discount, that means you're going to be left with two thirds. So you could just work out two thirds of this. And they get the same answer. Okay, so which hen house will be cheaper after the discount? Well, they're very similar. 
£423.50 and £424, but this one is cheaper by 50p. We don't have to say by how much, we just put the answer which is the Majestic. Sadie wants to put fencing around an area of grass where the hens can run about safely. She has 22 metres of fencing. She reads that the minimum area for each hen to run about safely is 1.5 metres squared. Sadie decides to make a square area of grass. What is the greatest number of hens she could keep? Well, if she's got 22 metres of fencing and she wants to make a square, well, that means each side is the same length. So in other words, the 22 metres divided by 4 will tell us how long each of the sides of the square will be. And we can use our calculator, 22 divided by 4, which gives us 5.5 .5 metres. Okay. Now, uh, we need to know what the area is, because we know that for each hen, she needs 1.5 metres squared. So if we work out how many metres squared we've got all together, then we can work out how many hens. So we need to do 5.5 times 5.5. Actually, let me just do a little sketch. So basically what we're working out is we've got a square, something like this. And we know that this is 5.5 metres, and we know this is 5.5 metres. So if we multiply them together, we'll get the area. So 5.5 times 5.5, and we get 30.25 metres squared. Okay. Now, for each hen, we need 1.5 metres squared. So we want to know how many of those 1.5 metres can we fit in here? Or in other words, 30.25 divided by 1.5. And we get 28.75. Right. Now, usually we'd round this up, but we haven't got enough for 29, so we're actually going to have to say, well, I'm just going to ignore the end. And that, that means... 28 hens. Yeah, because 29, we haven't got enough space for 29. It's nearly 29, but not quite. So we've got to stick at 28. Okay. Uh, what did I do? I did something wrong. I did 30.25 minus 1.5, didn't I? Let's try that again. 30.25 divided by 1.5. I think I hit the wrong button. Yeah, that looks better. We get 20.166 recurring. So that's going to be 20 hens. Okay. There you go. It's very easy to make a mistake. Now, the thing is about spotting your mistakes. So although I typed the wrong button, I saw, well, it just doesn't make sense. How can I have 28 hens? It's almost the same as this we're dividing by 1.5. So take your time, re even if you redo a calculation, but look at the answer you get and see, does it make sense? If there's any doubt, do it again, especially if you've got your calculator. It doesn't take long. Right, so 20 hands. Two D. Sadie buys 10 hands. She reads that if the mean number of eggs per hen per year is 250 or more, then the hens are happy and healthy. Sadie records how many eggs her 10 hens lay in the first six weeks. The table shows her results. Okay, so we've got these, the number of eggs for each week. Okay. Uh, use these using these figures, Sadie thinks that her hens are happy and healthy. Is Sadie correct? Right, so what we've got to do, really, is work out, what is it? She wants the mean number of eggs per hen per year 
is 250 or more. Well, let's find out what our total is here first of all. So if we add these all up, 46 plus 48 plus 55 plus 43 plus 52 plus 53 and we get 297. Right, so that's for 10 hens. So eggs per hen. Well, if we do 297 and we divide that by 10, because we've got 10 hens. So we get 29 eggs. Okay. Now that's each, so that's per hen. Okay. Now what we can do with this is we can say well that's for six weeks, so how many would it be for one week? So 29.7 divide that by six And we get 4.95, that's eggs per hen per week. Okay. Now, we know that we've got 52 weeks in a year. So if we're getting 4.95 eggs per week, per hen, well, we've just got to do... Uh, 4.95 times 52. Now, just going back, the original question was saying it's the mean number of eggs per hen per year. So that's why we worked out how many per hen, first of all. Then we worked out for one week, and now we're multiplying up to find out for the whole year. So 4.95 times 52, and that gives us 4 and that's eggs for the whole year. And that is more than 250. So, yes. Sadie is correct. Her hens will be happy and healthy. Two E. In a recent report, it was estimated that 750,000 people keep hens. Right, 750,000 in words. Well, that's going to be 750. So I'm doing this bit first, 750, and it's thousands. So 750. Two F. Move it up a bit. Fifty-three percent of the eggs produced in the UK in two thousand and eighteen were free range. Write fifty-three percent as a fraction. Well, fifty-three percent. If you've got it as a percent, you just need to put it over a hundred. That's what it means. Fifty-three out of a hundred. Activity three, decorating. Chester is decorating some of the rooms in his house. He needs to know the area of a window. The window measures three meters wide and 1.75 meters high. Round 1.75 to the nearest whole number and use this to estimate the answer to three times 1.75. Okay, so 1.75 to the nearest whole number, so we'll put approximately equals. Well, the whole number at the moment is one, so we look at the next digit. If it's five or more, we need to increase it. So the one becomes a two. Okay, so now we can do three times two, which is just six. Three B. 
Chester makes this scale plan of one of the rooms. Mm -hmm. This shape here, we've got a door down here, and we're told that one square equals 50 centimeters. So that's one of these squares. What is the actual length of the longest wall in meters? Right, well, which is the longest wall? Uh, I think it's going to be that one or this one. Let's count. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a half squares. Or well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine squares. So this is the longest one. So it's nine squares. And they want the actual length. Okay, well, it's nine. Uh, we can put that here. And we know that each square is 50 centimetres. So 9 times 50 gives us 450 centimetres. Now they want the answer in metres. I know that 100 centimetres equals 1 metre. So we need to divide the 450 by 100. And if we do that, we get 4.5 meters. Three C. In a different room, one of the walls is 2.7 meters long and 2.2 meters high. So 2.7 across, 2.2 up. Chester wants to put wallpaper on this wall. He uses wallpaper that's 0 0.5 meters wide and 12.1 meters long. Chester will hang the wallpaper vertically with no overlaps. Each piece will go from ceiling to floor with no joins. Uh, he, how many rolls of wallpaper will Chester need to buy? Okay, well, he's got a width of 2.7, and we know that each of the widths on the roll are the, the 0 0.5 meters wide. So, what we can do is 2.7 divided by 0 0.5. So, we're basically trying to sort of split this into strips each of them 0 0.5 meters wide so if we do 2.7 divided by 0 0.5 we get 5.4 okay so that means we're going to need four uh sorry not four we're going to need six lengths okay because we've got we've got uh we've got no joins okay so need because five lengths wouldn't be enough. We need that 0.4, and you can't buy 0.4, so we need six of them. Okay. Now, if we look at the length, uh, we have got, what have we got here? We know that one roll of wallpaper is 12.1 meters long. And each of these strips is 2.2 .2 meters. Okay, so we're going to need to do 12.1 divided by 2.2. Okay, because basically what we're having is one, two, three, four, five of these. But then this bit is the 0 0.4. But this is where we can't do a join. So we can join the, the wallpaper sort of going down but we can't cut off a strip and join another bit on the side. Okay. Right, so we know we've got 12.1 meters on a roll. Each uh, bit in the room is going to be 2.2 .2 meters long. So 12.1 divided by 2.2 .2 means we need 5.5 lengths. Uh, but we need six of them. So 5.5 lengths you, you would get from one. 
So it's not going to be enough. So basically, 5.5 .5 is less than 6. So I need two rolls. Okay. Hopefully that's clear. As I say, it's thinking about the fact that we can join vertically, but we can't join with like a, a bit next to it. Can't join horizontally. Three D. Chester will paint the other walls and the ceiling. He finds the colour he likes in two different sizes. We've got a seven hundred milliliter pot for ten pound fifteen, and a one point five litre pot for £21.21. £21. Chester thinks that the larger tin is better value for money. Is Chester correct? Show how you decide. So with this sort of thing, it's good to work out uh, the price for the same amount. Okay, at the moment we've got 700 millilitres here and 1.5 litres here. Well, we've, we, we've got different amounts, but we've also got different units. So let's at least get our units the same first of all. When I I know that one liter is one thousand milliliters, so one point five liters is going to be one point five or one and a half times a thousand. You can do it on your calculator, but hopefully you'll see that it's one thousand five hundred milliliters. Okay. Now. Now we've got both our measurements in millilitres, let's work out the price. You could work out the cost of one millilitre, uh, so maybe let's do that. Okay, so for this one, we're going to have £10.15, and we're going to divide that by 700. And we get 0 0.0145 pounds, and that's per milliliter. Okay. Now, if we do the same with this one, we're going to do 21 pounds 21, and we're going to divide this by 1,500. Okay, because we've got 1,500 milliliters at the moment. So 21.21 or 2 1 divided by 1500 we get 0 0.01414 right well if we compare these we've both got 0 0.014 this is a 5 this is a 1 so this one is smaller so let me write it down here 0 0.01414 is less than 0 0.0145. Chester thinks the larger tin is better to value for money. Is he correct? Yes, he is, because this one is cheaper, because that is smaller than that. Three E. Chester is going to lay tiles on the floor. He wants to lay them at an angle. He marks the angles on the tile before he cuts it as shown below. There we go. What is the angle he has marked? Okay, well, the only way to really be sure of this is to get out our protractor. There we go. Now, to measure an angle, we need to find where the lines join and line it up with our crosshairs here, our target point. Right, and then we need to get one line of the protractor lined up with one line of the angle we're looking at, like that. And this is the line we're measuring this angle, so we need to start at zero, not from 180, but zero. And the zero, 10, 20, and we're trying to see at what point this line crosses on the protractor, 50, and it's here and it's right halfway between 50 and 60. So this is going to be at 55 degrees. So we can write that in there. Three F. 
Chester needs 240 tiles. He buys 10% more tiles in case some of the tiles break. He cuts three-eighths of the tiles he buys. How many tiles does he cut? OK, so he starts off with 240 tiles. Then he buys 10% more. Well, we can work out 10% with the calculator, or we can say, well, the 10% would just take off the zero. So that's going to be 24. Again, we can use the calculator, or we can add it up manually and say, that's 264 tiles he buys. He then cuts three-eighths of them. So we want three-eighths of, which means times, 264. Now I'll use the calculator for this. So 3 divided by 8 times 264. And we get 99. Chester buys a pack of sandpaper sheets with a mixture of grades. That just means some's rougher sandpaper, some's finer. So don't worry, if you see something you think, I'm not sure what it means, don't worry about it. Basically there's a variety of sandpaper sheets. The pack contains 12 coarse grade, 7 medium grade and 1 fine grade sheets. Chester takes one sheet out at random. What's the probability that the sheet Chester picks is medium grade? Mark the probability on the scale below. Well, we've got 12 and 7 and 1. So in total, we've got 20 sheets. How many are medium grade? Well, 7. So we've got 7 out of 20. And what we can do, if we do that on the calculator, 7 divided by 20, we get it as a decimal, which might help us. 0.35. Now, on here we've got our probability scale from 0 up to 1. Well, let's try and work out what each of these sort of gaps are worth. So we're not interested in the line, but we, it's the gaps. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So if we do 1 divided by 10, that will tell us how big each of those gaps are. Is. So 0 0.1. We want 0 0.35. So we'd have 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. The next one would be 0 0.4. We want 0 0.35, so it's going to be right in between the two. And we can write it like that. Anything that's kind of indicating the right place on here. Activity 4. Football. Every year, Shaz arranges a football tournament to raise money for charity. Last year, she raised £175. This year, her target is to raise 25% more than last year. What is £175 increased by 25%? Well, let's work out our 25%. So 25 divided by 100 times 175. And we get £43.75. Then we want to add on the original £175, which gives us a total of £218. 75. 4B. Shaz will share the money she raises between three charities. She gives a local hospice two fifths of the money. She gives Save the Children one quarter of the money. She gives Aid Concern seven twentieths of the money. Which charity will get the most money? Okay, well, if you remember from before, the total was £218.75p. So the hospice, this is going to be two-fifths times 
75, which is, well, we've all got, already got the amount in there, so we times 2 divided by 5. And we get 87. Again, don't leave it as 0.5, it's money, so it's got to be 50, 50p. She gives, save the children one quarter, so we need to start with the original amount again. So times one divided by four. So this one's going to be 54 pounds. And it's money, so we only want two decimal places. So it would be six, eight, but the next digit is more than five, so we're going to make it six, nine. So 54 pounds, 69p. And this last one here, so we're going to do uh, 7 over 20 times 218.75 which gives us 76 pounds and the first two digits are 5 and 6 the next one is less than 5 so we can just forget about them and we've got 76 pounds and 56p uh, which charity will get the most money? Well, which is bigger? 87.50, 54.69, or 76? Well, it's this one up here. So it is the local hospice. For C. Before the first match starts, the perimeter of the football pitch needs to be marked out. And we've got it drawn on here. Calculate the perimeter of the pitch. Well, the perimeter is the distance all the way around the pitch. So, although we haven't got it written on here, well, this side must be the same as that side. So this is going to be 18 metres as well. Here to here. And along the bottom, well, that's going to be the same as along the top. So you can add them together or add them and then double them. I like to just literally add them as I go around. So we've got 38 plus 18 plus another 38 plus another 18. Okay, might not be the most efficient, but this way I make sure I don't miss any of the sides. And we get a total of 112 meters. Shaz needs to mark out the centre spot of the rectangular football pitch. She uses the lines of symmetry and marks where they meet. Draw the lines of symmetry on the diagram below. Well, lines of symmetry are lines which cut the shape into two equal parts, but with a sort of reflection, so as if you've got a mirror going through the middle. So... We're going to have a line going down here, because this side would be the same as that. Now, to do it accurately, I need to know how wide this is. And on my drawing here, I've got it as, mm, what's that, 8.6 centimetres. So I want to go halfway between the two. So what we'll do is we'll do 8.6 divided by 2, which is 4.3. So I'll make a mark at... 4.3. I'll do the same at the bottom. And then I can draw my line of symmetry. Now I like the lines of symmetry to go th straight through the shape, so stick out at the end. So I don't have to, but I think it looks tidier. Now, that splits it into two equal shapes. Uh, we could do it another way. We could do it horizontally as well, because if you imagine if you folded the top down, it would perfectly match the bottom. But again, we need it to be exact, so let's measure. Well, this is exactly four centimeters, so halfway is gonna be two. And over here, same again, two centimeters. So there are our two lines of symmetry. For E. 
There will be six matches in total. Each match lasts 20 minutes. There is a five minute gap between each match. Shaz wants to have the last match wants to have the last match finish at 14:10. What time should she start the first match? Right. So, what you could do is you could start from 14:10 and work backwards, uh, which which would work, or you can work out the total amount of time needed and then take it off of 14:10 to find out the start time. So, I'm going to do it that way. So, if we've got a match, we've got 20 minutes. Then we've got a five minute gap. Then we've got another match of 20 minutes. Then another five minute gap. Then another 20 minute match. Then another five minutes. Another 20. And another five. Another 20. So one, two, three, four, five matches so far. So another five. And then another 20 minute match. Now we don't need. Uh, a gap at the end. It says the gap is just between the matches. So let's add these all up. Or we can say one, two, three, four, five, six. So we've got six lots of 20. Which is 120. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, five lots of five. Which I know is 25. So in total, we've got 145 minutes. Right, so we do need to go backwards though. So if we're starting at 14.10, we need to take away... Uh, actually, first of all, what we'll do to this is we're going to turn this into hours and minutes. So 145 minutes, well, I know that we've got 60 minutes in an hour. So 120 minutes would be two hours. So if we do 145 minus 120, we're left with 25 minutes. So in other words, 145 minutes equals 2 hours and 25 minutes. So if first of all we take off the 2 hours, well 14.10 take away 2, that's going to give us 12.10. Then we want to take away 25 minutes. Well, let's just take off 10 minutes first of all. So if we take off 10 minutes, because that's going to take us down to 12 o'clock. Now we've only taken 10 minutes off, but we had to take 25 minutes off. So we've still got another 15 minutes to take away. Right. Well, if it's 12 o'clock at the moment, going back 15 minutes, well, we've got 60 minutes in an hour. So 60 minus 15 is going to be 45, and it's going to be one hour before 12, which is 11. So we get 11.45. 4F. These are the scores of the football matches. So match one was between team A and team B. And the score was 4 to team A and 5 to B. So team B won that one. Match number 2, team C won 3 nil against team D and so on. Teams get 2 points if they win. 1 point each if they draw, when both teams score the same. And 0 points if they lose. Complete the table below. Right, so this is with the positions. So... Let's see how many points they each got. Now, rather than going straight into this, I'm going to work out the points for each game, first of all. So in this game, Team B won, so they would get two points. This game, 
team C1, so they would get two. This was a draw, so A got one and C got one. This game was a win to team B, so they get two. This was a win to team D, so they get two. And this was a win to team C, so they get two points. So let's do a little total. So A, B, C, D. So how many points did team A get all together? Well, zero, we've got one, nothing there. So team A just got one point in total. What about team B? We've got two points there, nothing in that game, nothing. Another two, so that's four, nothing there, and nothing there. So four points in total. What about team C? Nothing in the first game. Two points there. Another one there makes it three. Nothing, nothing. And two there. So that's five points in total for team C. And what about team D? Didn't play in the first game. Nothing in that game. Nothing in that game. Two points in that game. Nothing there. So which team came first? Well, the highest one was C with five points. Uh, second place, well, that was team B with four points. Third place was team D with two points. And finally, team A scored only one point. And finally, Shaz buys drinks for the players and spectators. Each of the four teams will have six players. She estimates there will be 50 spectators in total. Shaz allows 1.2 litres of drink per player and 300 millilitres of drink per spectator. The drink is sold in 2.5 litre bottles. How many bottles will Shaz need to buy? Okay, so... Uh, what can we write? So... For the teams, well actually first of all, let's get our units the same. So we know that we've got, we've got litres and we've got millilitres. I know that there's 1,000 millilitres in one litre. So that means that 1.2 litres must be 1,200 millilitres. Okay. Now, Let's think of the teams first of all. We've got, so let's do teams. There's four teams with six players. So that's 24 people in total. Each team gets 1.2 litres or 1,200 millilitres. So we can do 24 times 1,200. And that gives us a total of... 28,800 millilitres. Okay. Then, if we do, well, the spectators, well, this one's, we've already got the 50, so it's going to be 50, and each of them get 300 millilitres of drink. So 50 times 300. And we get 15,000 millilitres. So in total, if we add these together, we get 43,800 millilitres. Right. Now, we're told the drink is sold in 2.5 litre bottles. Right, so we've got millilitres and we've got litres again. So... We want to get them the same. We could turn this into millilitres, but actually it might be easier to turn this into litres. So if we do 43,800 divided by 1,000, that will give us how many litres we need. 43.8 litres. Okay, so now if we take the 43.8 
We know that they're 2.5 litre bottles, so divide it by 2.5 to find out how many bottles we need. And we get 17.52 bottles. But you can't buy 0.52 of a bottle, so we need 18 bottles. And that's the end of the paper. Hope you found that helpful. Uh, please like, subscribe to the channel so you get updates as I um, load new videos on, which I'm trying to do all the time. Uh, remember, you can use the playlists. So at the moment, you might be level one, but hopefully you'll get through that, and then you might be interested in level two as well. So I've got everything organized by the level as well as the um, exam board. And remember, even though you're doing one exam board, sometimes it's helpful to have a look at some of the other exam boards as well. Get, get an idea of, of the different types and different styles of questions that you can be asked. Okay, so thank you very much for watching and hopefully see you again soon.